This is John Giever for MedPage Today. Survival among patients with the glioblastoma multiforme has improved in recent years, but it's still only about one year in patients with newly diagnosed disease, and usually less than that in patients with recurrent tumors. When glioblastoma tumors do recur, usually it's within two centimeters of the original site. Neurosurgeons have therefore been looking for local approaches to preventing recurrence. Two avenues that have shown promise recently are radioactive iodine seeds and chemotherapy wafers implanted in the cavity left from primary tumor removal. These have shown median survival of up to 47 weeks when tested in patients with recurrent disease. Now, researchers at the University of Cincinnati are reporting in the Journal of, uh, Journal of Neurosurgery that combining wafers with seeds leads to even greater survival. I talked with Dr. Ronald Warnick, who led the Cincinnati team. We felt very strongly that we might enhance the effectiveness of this treatment if we combined both seeds and wafers. So we had positive results from two previous studies and we thought we would combine them. There is also scientific evidence that in the, from the laboratory that BCNU, the chemotherapy within the uh, uh, gliadel wafers, is synergistic, basically a radio sensitizer uh, with concurrent radiation. So there was a radiobiologic reason for combining these two treatments also. Well, the seeds uh, give off, uh, for all intents and purposes, their radiation over about six months. And then all that's left is the titanium casings. We leave those in place and we don't generally remove them. Uh, the wafers disintegrate, give off their BCNU over about 21 days, and there's kind of a shell of a wafer uh, that, that persists for about six months also, but in general uh, degrades to near nothing. So all that's left are the titanium casings, and they're inert, and there's no need to remove them. According to the report from Dr. Warnick and his team, the combination satisfied their hope for an additive effect with substantially better survival than for current treatment. Well, the survival results uh, showed that, that, that approximately uh, 69, almost 70 weeks median survival from the time of recurrence. This is quite remarkable because if, if you remember, patients with newly diagnosed glioblastoma, not these patients, but when they're first diagnosed, their average survival is one year, 52 weeks. So we're talking about at the time of recurrence, which is usually about nine months into their struggle with glioblastoma, we were able to add on an average of 69 weeks from that point. So that's quite remarkable when you compare it to other treatments. Uh, the average survival for a patient with recurrent glioblastoma who is given chemotherapy is about six months, and the average survival for somebody with wafers or seeds, as I mentioned, is about 26 weeks for wafers and 47 weeks for seeds. So when we combined them together, we almost got an additive effect of both of those sur survival advantages. So it's one of the longest um, survival advantages we've seen from any treatment. And it really is because of the focus on giving the treatment where the tumor cells are. That is, right there at the time of surgery in the resection cavity. Safety is a concern with any cancer treatment, and especially when different types of therapy are combined. As Dr. Warnick explained, when you're pushing the envelope, safety problems can arise. When seeds and wafers have been used separately, there have been relatively few toxicity problems. But Dr. Warnick's team found that eight of their patients, almost 25%, experienced brain necrosis requiring either surgery or hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Now, one may think that 25% is a high incidence, but for patients who are faced with the choice of sure death from their glioblastoma recurrence, versus a 25% risk of radiation effect, most of which is salvageable with treatment, I think that most people would choose this treatment. Interestingly, the patients who have done the best on the trial were the patients in that group that have the radiation necrosis. It appears that almost if the treatment works too well and causes this degree of radiation effect, that the glioblastoma is also killed, and those patients have had the longest survival. With this success under their belts, the group has now begun two different follow-up investigations of the seed and wafer combination. This trial involved a dose escalation of the wafers. Uh, so within the trial, the patients all received the same number of seeds. However, the number of wafers increased over the course of the trial once we were familiar with the side effects. So some patients received four wafers, others six, and the largest group had eight. Well, since that time, we're near completing a study 
of patients who received eight wafers because we found that was safe so we wanted to do some additional patients and so we have about 54 additional patients who are analyzing now that have had what we consider the maximal therapy that is eight wafers and 40 to 60 seeds so we're going to analyze those and see if they did better than this group because of, because of course our current study included patients that only had four wafers trying to determine basically if there's a dose response for the wafers so we're continuing those studies but also we felt that we could move this treatment from the recurrent setting where a patient has regrowth of their glioblastoma to the upfront setting where it's newly diagnosed so we now have an ongoing protocol at University of Cincinnati where patients undergo their initial operation for glioblastoma we then place wafers and a escalating number of seeds and then they go on to have their conventional radiation and oral chemotherapy and we're hoping that this combination up front at the very beginning will be successful and maybe even more successful than for recurrent glioblastoma. Neither of these studies has a control group nor did the trial reported this week. Dr. Warnick explained that it will take time to organize the randomized and multi-center trial needed to firmly establish the combination's effectiveness. That, that is a very difficult, you know, doing a controlled study for these implants, um, as you know from your experience, is very difficult to mount. First of all, we have to get enough, uh, a sufficient number of interested neurosurgeons who uh, would like to try seeds and wafers. Uh, this is a treatment that's not done at a lot of hospitals. Uh, University of Cincinnati is one of the leaders of this. Other hospitals have no experience with the seeds whereas of course the wafers are very commonly used. So we hope this article will stimulate a lot of discussion and interest among neurosurgeons and that other brain tumor centers will join University of Cincinnati in a uh, multi-center randomized uh, trial. And uh, that would be the ultimate goal to prove its uh, e efficacy. Some may wonder whether these incremental advances are that important when out-of-the-box approaches such as stem cell therapies and cancer vaccines could provide quantum leaps. Dr. Warnick was emphatic on that score. Well, I think the most important thing that I've learned from this trial and from treating patients with glioblastoma is we have to try multiple different pathways of treatment. Right now, the rage is stem cell therapy, immunotherapy, and vaccines, and that has a lot of potential uh, for success in the future. But we should not forget about the tools that are available to neurosurgeons anywhere in the United States, that is wafers, seeds, and the combination of those because they're very effective treatments even though they may not be on the face of it as sexy as immunotherapy and stem cell therapy. I'm John Giever, MedPage Today.